be here this morning. It wasn't part of our original plans to be in the States at this time, but God worked it out. And so we decided to visit some churches during this time that we're home. And we're happy that we're able to share with you during this time that we're home. We want to thank you um, for all that you do for us in your partnership with us as missionaries. Um, we just really, really appreciate your partnership. For us to go, the church also has to send. For us to say yes, the church has to say yes. And so we thank you for your faithfulness. We also thank you for all that you do for our Bible college. Um, probably lots of things that you don't even realize, but you do so much for our Bible college. And without your support from Hyde, um, the college would really have struggled, maybe not even be open at this point. And so we just really, really appreciate everything through your faith promises, through your prayers, through your love, through the people that you send on work teams and all of that, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Hi. Hi. Good, good, good. Uh, we're, we're really happy to be here. Um, when in the, we're in the U.S., coming to Hyde is part of, for me, it's part of feeling like coming home. So it's really nice to be here. Um, just a little update on me for those who don't know. I finally finished high school at the beginning of this year. And um, thank you. And um, I will be going to Kingswood University in Canada this fall. And I'll be studying. Thank you again. And I'll be studying. <laughs> and I'll be studying uh, Christian counseling. So I'm really excited. Thanks. And I'll be I'm just excited about that. <laughs> and <laughs> yes. Um, the, one of the main reasons we came back to the States was, uh, a lot of you will remember my best friend, Menzi. Uh, we came for his graduation. And yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, he's been here for the past five years and graduated uh, this year from Southside Christian School with honors. And um, he <laughs> we're very, we're very <laughs> <laughs> We're very proud of him and all he's accomplished, and he's going to be going to Charleston Southern University this fall studying nursing, so we're very excited for him. Um, we're going to sing a song now in Saswati, and the basic translation of it is just a song of giving praise and adoration to the Most High, the Ancient of Days, and giving him all the honor he deserves. So the last three years have been rather difficult for us there at the Bible College. We went through COVID, we went through civil unrest, and then when we were getting ready to open a new school year, we got word that the government put new regulations on all institutions of higher education, 
And they were also saying we had to start the accreditation process. And so for the last year and a half, we've not been having classes. But um, we've been working, trying to do all these things that the, the um, government has told us to do. It's not been easy, but we finally got word that in July we're allowed to open and we'll be starting a new school year in July. <laughs> this is a big answer to prayer and for those of you who helped us pray, we just want to say thank you so much. We also want to thank God for sending us the Azekiwes. They came right before COVID happened. He's been the new principal, but we've not had students. <laughs> And so we want to thank God, though, for sending us as a keyways. They come from Kenya, and they, he came with his family, his wife Gloria, and two sons, and they're just um, a huge blessing to us, hard workers, and Joshua is the person that we need at this time. Although it's something that he's not done before, he's working hard, and God is helping us. And his wife also helps with teaching, and his boys are very involved. They're involved in the church that we go to. They're just a huge blessing to have there. And we just thank God for them. And probably some of you were praying for us because we were looking for a principal for some time. But God has answered prayer. And so we give God the glory. I've been at Emmanuel Wesleyan Bible College now. On July 4th this year, it will be 29 years. And... Um, God has been with us through a lot of ups and a lot of downs, but it's been good, and we praise God. I feel privileged that God would even call me and allow me to work for him in this way, and it's just been a wonderful, wonderful journey. Um, the Bible College is celebrating 50 years of operation uh, this year also, and so that's another big milestone for us. At the Bible College, we train people who are called into ministry, mostly those that are called to pastor. And that's where most of our students, uh, what they do after they graduate. Um, in the period of time that I've been there, I was trying to count up how many different countries we've had students from. And I think it's 12 different countries and um, from Africa and even outside of Africa. And... Um, I was also trying to think, where are our students now? Um, and so I'm just going to share a little breakdown of the things that I could think of um, in the time that I've been there. Most of our students are pastoring, but we have those that are teachers. We have some that are principals. We have some that are builders. They came to Bible College, and because we were building buildings, they learned how to build, and they've made a living off of building. We have some that are workers in the government. We have leaders of the Wesleyan Church in Southern Africa. We have two different graduates that have started orphanages and one that started a center for abused women and children, one that runs a clinic. And we have a sister Bible college in Shai Shai, Mozambique, and almost all of their staff and their principal are graduates of EWBC. We have several that have gone on to get their master's, and one of our former students now has their doctorate. And it all started at our little Bible college. I believe that only eternity will really tell the full story of the impact that Emmanuel Wesleyan Bible College has had on this world. And what's so neat about it is you have played a part. Through your partnership with us, you have played a part in what is happening there and the gospel going out in so many different directions and many wonderful things are happening. And so we thank you for the part that you play in your financial support for us as missionaries. You make it possible to be there. And also the financial support that you give to our college through student scholarships. You um, give medical insurance to our staff, which they would not have if it weren't for you all. And you send teams that come. You send teams that come for a pastor's camp every other year. And when you come, you make a big impact 
and you are a big blessing to the college. I know that our staff there at the Bible College, they appreciate all the work that you all have done. And so we bring thank you from the staff. Um, during this past year and a half um, that we haven't been having classes, we've been in lots of meetings. The staff has been working really, really hard. Um, I don't like these meetings at all. I like teaching, but we've been in meetings for a year and a half, <laughs> and I'm ready to get back in the classroom. But God has helped us as we've worked through lots of these things. It's not been easy. Um, the government, it's new for them too. And so there's been just lots of <laughs> ups and downs and redoing this and redoing that. And the board that we were working with through the government, they were all fired and the new one came and it was just a lot of struggles. But God has helped us and we're excited about opening we also, our librarian has had a lot of challenges too because they're forcing us to go digital with all of our books, to have them um, digital in a system that the students can check out books that way. And so all of these things are good for us, but boy, are they painful to get through. And we have hired three guys full-time um, working on getting all of our books put on digital um, computer um, they have worked really hard. Lots of evenings when I take the dog out at night, late at night, I'll look and the library lights are still on. And they've just worked so, so hard. And um, we just praise God that we have made it through to this point and that we're getting ready to open. While we were doing all of this, um, We've been busy, but I can say that it's not as busy as when school is in. Because, you know, when school is in, you're working all day, and then all evening you're preparing for the next day. And it's just a constant, constant work that we are doing. And so we've had a little bit more free time during this time. And so we decided that we needed to do some things and get involved. And so we're going to just share with you a few of the things that we've been doing during this time. Yeah. Um. <coughs> We, when people ask me what I do in Swaziland, they, my most common answer is I do whatever she tells me to do, which is also the correct answer. And um, so one of the things we've been working on, like she said, we have, we've had a vision for a while of starting an English speaking church plant in Swaziland, Wesleyan church plant in Swaziland. And um, when Azikiwe's arrived in Swaziland, we found they shared the same vision. And so <coughs> March of last year, we started one, and it happened all quicker than we were anticipating it to happen. To happen, and um, but we've been doing it since then, and it's been great. It's been great growth for us, and the heart behind it was targeting um, youth and college age uh, students because um, over time the Wesleyan Church in Swaziland has kind of lost that demographic, and so those are the. Those are the people we really wanted to target, and um, we've had a lot of growth, and it's been good. We've been running between 50 and 60 people on Sundays, so it's been uh, quite amazing, and I've been put in charge of the worship team, and I lead along with uh, some of my friends there and the Azikiwa Sons, and she's been put in charge of the children's ministry, um, and so it's been just, yeah, a great opportunity of growth for us, and um, we've definitely really enjoyed doing it. Um, our pastor, Gloria, she called me one day and she says, hey, I think we need to do a kids camp because we had, we were running about 20 kids at that time. And she says, I think that would be good for us. And I'm like, that's great. You know, when are we going to do it? And she says, in three weeks. And I was just like, oh my goodness, because I really like to be prepared for things. And um, even there, it's everything you do just seems to be a little bit more difficult and not as easy as it is here. And so anyway, we got to work, working really hard, fast, and we had a camp with our church kids, and we inv were able to invite a few of our community kids. We were able to do 30 kids with the finances that we had. And so they came. It was a great time. Menzies sisters were part of that. They came. And um, it was just great time of bonding with us and our church kids that we're just um, starting to work with. And the, the boys, 
I think he's supposed to say this. Um, yeah, so we when we were planning for camp, we decided that we would split the kids up into six teams, and we decided that me and the guys, these guys were, and a couple of these guys um, are from the Bible study that I lead on Saturdays, and three of them, and they've just, and since then, more guys have joined since, since I've left, um, but yeah, this has just been cool to watch them. They've shown great spiritual growth and they're just desiring to serve and to do more things. And so we decided that me and these other guys would be team leaders. And we weren't sure how that was gonna pan out because these guys, they were not, before the camp, they weren't really, they hadn't really worked with kids and they weren't necessarily excited about working with kids. And one of them specifically, when he volunteered to be a team leader, we were like, but it worked out and they did amazing and yeah, they just, it was exceptional, and it was really fun to see the growth that happened in them during that week, and uh, now how it deepened our friendships and relationships with each other, but also with the kids in the church, and um, it was kind of a full circle moment, because uh, she used to have these guys in the kids club uh, as they were growing up, and now they're older, and they're working with kids in our church, and it's just really, see, really cool to see how God has been working in their lives and how they've just been growing and how they're excited about what they're doing. And another thing that you might be interested in, two of the guys that are faithfully working with us at church come from the orphanage that you give to Penny March to. And so it's just really exciting because we're starting to see spiritual growth, you know, in their lives, because before they would just, they were going to another church, and they weren't doing anything, they were just present, and um, now that they're involved, it's just like they're blossoming, and God is at work in their life, and since we've been home, this is our third Sunday, um, our church, these guys, we've started a youth ministry on Saturday, and um, they, they've had between 20 and 30 youth that have come, and um, our pastor is working with these guys very closely in that, but they are the ones that are leading it, and they're breaking into small groups, and each, each of these guys has a group that they're working with as they're going through the Word of God, and they're also, you know, having some time where they're doing games and fun stuff too, but it's really exciting, and these guys are so excited, you know, and I, I just am anxious to see what God is going to do in their lives. Pray for them. I'm praying that God will call some of them to be pastors, to, to, to work for him, because um, they're already being used, and I see those gifts that God has given them, and so we're really excited about that. I've lived in Swaziland now for 28 years, and um, living there, it, it changes you. It changes your perspective on life and what is really, really important. And it always hits me when I come back home, when I see life here, and I see life there, and I see uh, priorities here and um, so I just want to share with you a little bit and talk with you a little bit about the mission that Jesus has given to us and you as a church are very involved but right now I want to talk to you as individuals because I don't know what you do in this church I don't know how faithful you are in missions, so I'm talking to you as individuals. Jesus, his very last words that he left us before he went back to heaven, we find in Matthew 28, verse 19. And usually when somebody is giving you their last words, you want to hear clearly. Sometimes it's instructions. Sometimes it's, you know, saying goodbye. But in this passage of scripture, Jesus was given instructions, and it's not just for pastors, it's not just for missionaries, but it's for every child of God. This is what he told us to do. He said, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, 
baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded. And surely I am with you always. And I love that last phrase. We don't do it on our own. He's with us. And then there's a passage in Acts 1.8. It says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the world. Why did Jesus come? Why did he leave heaven and come to earth? He came as the very first missionary because he loves you, he loves us, and he wants us to know how we can be with him. He came so that we can be saved and that we can be witnesses at home, right where you live, right where you work, in your family, in your neighborhood, and also around the world. Did you know that the return of Jesus, which we call the second coming, is very closely connected to the mission that he's given us to do? He tells us to take the gospel into all the world, right? Well, in Matthew 24, verse 14, it says, This gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. We've got a big job to do. If we want Jesus to come back, we need to be busy getting the gospel into all the world so that he can then return. Do you long for heaven? Do you long for that day when he returns and we can be together with him forever and ever? Do you ever get tired of living in this world? You know, this, this world is not our home. Heaven is our home. And we should be longing for it. But we shouldn't be going alone. We need to be taking people with us. We, we need to have people from every tribe and every nation. In Revelation uh, 7, 9, and 10, it gives us a picture of who's going to be in heaven. You know, heaven's not just for Americans. And if you, if you don't like people that look different than you, you probably won't like heaven because there's going to be people there from everywhere. And in this passage of scripture, it says, After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could count from every nation and all tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes and palm branches in their hands, and they cried out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Heaven is going to be filled with people from everywhere. And I look forward, I look forward to it. He wants to save the nations. He came for the nations, for all people. And he wants us to be a part of that and take in the gospel to all nations. You know, it's easy here in the U.S. to, to think that life is all about us. It's easy for us to really work hard on being happy. And what makes us happy? It's by having things and having nice stuff. Um, you know, we, we raise our kids we, we send them to college so that they can get a good job and so they can have a nice house and a nice car and all of that. And having nice stuff is not wrong. But it can be if we put that before what God is concerned about most. His, his biggest concern is not that we're, we're happy and comfortable in our living. That's not his biggest concern. 
His biggest concern is that the gospel is taken to all people and that everyone hears about him. And so let's, we have to not get caught up in all of those things that is so easily for us to get sucked into. You know, when I come home, I, I have to fight it because I feel myself being sucked into some of that mindset of, you know, life is nice here. It's easy. And there's lots of nice things here. And I could be comfortable living here. But I know that God has asked me to go. And up to this point, that's what I've got to do until he says I'm finished. But we must also not get caught up in all of that because we don't live for this earth. We're living for heaven. Jesus, he told us, he says, don't spend all your time trying to gather up things and treasures that will some way just someday just fade away. It will, it will rot. It will be gone. When we die, all these things that we've collected, what do we do? It's for nothing. It, it doesn't go with us. And so Jesus said, rather, store up treasures in heaven where wrath and, and dust does not destroy it but it will be eternal. The things that we store up in heaven are eternal. There's a, a, in, in the book Purpose Driven Life, I'm, I think that's where I read this, Mark, um, Rick Warren, he gave a little illustration of a dot and then there's a line connected to it and I don't know what happened whenever... We move stuff around in the PowerPoint. <laughs> but it's, not, it's supposed to be a dot on one end with a line and then an arrow on the end. And that represents our life. The dot represents our time here on earth, from our birth to our death. And the line represents eternity. And when we die, we're all still going to be living in eternity. And what we do here on this earth affects where and how we will live in eternity. And so many times people live for that dot. And you know, if you live to be a hundred years old, that dot is like a speck compared to eternity. And yet, we're so caught up in living for that dot, gathering, trying to, you know, make things nice and, and, and all of that. But Jesus said, while you're here on this earth, live for eternity. Don't, don't gather stuff here. It, you know, this time on earth is short. And, and what we do here affects how we're going to live in eternity. You know, I believe that heavenly-minded people are going to enjoy heaven a whole lot more than earthly-minded people. You know, we can, we can get into heaven because we're saved. And we can also get into heaven and enjoy it a whole lot more because of the things that we've done and the decisions that we've made here. You know, in heaven, we're going to be rewarded. We, do, we can't do anything on our own part to get there, okay? We're saved by faith through, through grace. But when we get there, the rewards that we get are going to be for the decisions that we've made here on earth. And there's going to be some people that have a whole lot of rewards. There's going to be some people that they just get into heaven. Does that make sense? It's kind of like the thief on the cross. He made it, but what, what does he have to show for, you know? I want to be, I want those rewar rewards when I get to heaven. And so the decisions that we make here on earth 
affects the rewards that we get in heaven. Sometimes the things that we do, we don't even realize that it's had an effect on somebody else. My dad has often told the story of when he went to Bible college the first time he was very shy and he drove there and he was so shy he couldn't get out of the car. He wanted to get out of the car but he couldn't get out of the car. And he turned around and he went back home and he didn't go to that school. And later he went to another college and when he got there he was having a hard time getting out of the car. And just wanting to get up the nerve to get out of the car. And a man walked over and knocked on his window, and he says, are you a new student? And Dad said, yes. And he says, come, I'll go with you. And he went with him and helped him get registered. That man does, he probably never knew what that simple act of kindness did and how that simple act of kindness has impacted eternity. Because, if, because it was at that Bible college that dad met mom. And if that man had not done that, I probably wouldn't be standing before you today. Pastor Bob, we wouldn't know him. And the ripple effects go on and on. And so I just want to challenge you. You know, when God asks you to do something, even if it's a small thing that maybe doesn't even make sense to you, do it because it can affect somebody else's life. Maybe when you get to heaven, somebody might come up to you and say, ah, you, thank you. And you say, what? Thanks for sending Dorcas to Swaziland because through her, I'm here in heaven today. Maybe somebody might say, thank you for praying for the persecuted Christians. I was in prison. I was discouraged. I felt like giving up. But your prayers caused me to keep living for God and to not give up. Thank you. Maybe somebody might say, thank you for, for uh, giving your faith promise because, you know, my pastor, who was a graduate of Emmanuel Wesleyan Bible College, he led me to Christ. And so when we get to heaven, there's going to be lots of stories and we're going to say, oh, so that happened. Oh, wow, I didn't even realize what I did, how it impacted you. And so I just want to challenge you. Don't be more concerned about material things, but be concerned about people, relationships, and other people's lives, whether it be in your work, your community, or even to the ends of the earth. Are you making God's business your business? Are you part of taking part in the mission that he's asked us to do, to go into all the world? Are you living for yourself? Are you living for God and other people? Are you laying your treasures up here on earth? Are you gathering a lot of stuff here? Or are you laying up treasures in heaven that will last forever and ever? If I spoke to your children, what would they say is most important to mom and dad? Is it God and his mission? Is it helping people, making an impact on different lives? Or is it wealth, positions, all of those kind of things? What's most important to you? Sometimes it's good to just step back and ask ourselves these questions. And I just challenge you to do that to ask yourself, what's most important to me? And how does that show in the way that I'm living? I want to thank you 
for the part that Hyde Wesleyan Church plays in our ministry in the Bible College. We just thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We um, value you. We thank God for you. And um, we ask that you would pray for us. We've got some rough days ahead. Um, we need uh, to get this accreditation done in two years. They've given us two years. But lots of the things that need done is going to take finances to do. And the college is, you know, doesn't have the extra finances. And so we're walking forward in faith, believing that God is going to provide for the needs so that we can get this accreditation done. And so we ask for your prayers. Pray, pray that God will send us new students, you know. We feel like we're starting all over. And being shut, uh, closed down for a year and a half, and now we're needing to get new students. Pray that God will send the people that he wants to be there, the people that he has called. And we also ask that you just pray for Matthias and I in the back on the uh, little shelf there right by the office window is some of our new prayer cards or newest prayer cards. And um, please take one and put it somewhere where you can remember to pray for us. And we just really will appreciate those prayers. I'm going to ask Futi if she would come up. Futi is Menzi's mom, and God made it possible for her to come for his graduation. And Futi has been a good friend to me. She's a neighbor, and um, she just wants to say something. That's a translate that it's that's what we say when we are greeting you back in Africa as what Dini. As you have said, I'm Futi, I'm Menzi's mother. I'm so happy to worship with you today. And the presence of the Lord is so tangible in this place. I am so really happy. Five years uh five years ago, my son came uh to this place. And thank you for welcoming him. Thank you for loving him. You know, when I say loving him, I thank you all uh, for taking care of him. Some supported him financially. Some prayed for him. Some just embraced him. I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. And um, thank you, Hyde. Switzerland is never the same without you. With everything that you are doing, it's just making a great impact in our lives back there. Thank you for sending Dockers and Matthias. There's just a lot that needs to be done that side. Uh, thank you just for putting smiles on people's faces. What we are doing to them, it extends. It goes a far, w I mean, a long way to touch other people's lives. Um, uh, <laughs> you are a family. It's just that uh, I'm a member of this family. It's just that I stay in Africa. <laughs> Amen. So, um, Uncle Bob Croft, Pastor Bob, I'm so happy that I've known him. I've known Dorcas and Matthias. Maybe I wouldn't be here today. I mean, speaking to you sometimes um, back there, he knows he would just come and he would like here and then the need will be like maybe sometimes there'll be no food sometimes there'll be like something just wrong everyone is sick and stuff but they'll be like here we are and um we are so grateful sometimes we'll just move around the house he'll be taking pictures without noticing and then i'll see it on facebook and they'll like oh uncle bob hallelujah thank you so much pastor steve we appreciate you i mean for everything that you're doing here in uh high Jerusalem church we are so grateful. This is um, a small gift um, that I have for High Wrestling Church, just to say thank you to, all, to you all, amen. Um, you've just played a big part in men's life. Um, maybe it started a way back, hallelujah. And uh, Hyde has been in that plan that God has in, uh, for men's life. The Leonards, the scribes, the cousin Matthias, the whole entire Hyde family, I appreciate. This is for for you from all the children that did, that doesn't that don't I mean that doesn't have fathers and mothers and from the single parents. We just want to appreciate you. When you look at this, just know 
that we love you and we thank you for everything that you're just doing for us. Continue to pray for us. We, loving, we love you and we're praying for you. Will you stand with me? There's not room on the stage for all of us, so I am your representative, and I'm going to put my arms around this group of people, but I want you again to express your connection to this moment as we close in prayer and thank the Lord for the relationships that we have. Again, let me say clearly, we don't just support mission work somewhere. These are real people involved in the kingdom work that God is at hand doing nonstop, 24-7, beyond our knowledge, beyond our ability. He is at work, and he invites us into that. This is an expression of that. These relationships are an expression, an illustration, a living testimony of God at work, and we are a part of it. You are a part of it, so thank you. Again, thank you. Will you extend your hand with me and allow me to pray? Jesus, thank you for my friends. Thank you for the relationships that you, Lord, have blessed us to be in. Thank you for Dorcas and Matthias. Thank you for Menzi and Futi. Thank you for their lives. Thank you for the ways that they continue to say yes to your call. And thank you, Lord, for the ways you equip them each and every day to continue to be faithful to your call. Lord, what a true and blessed privilege it is to know that we are a part of their yes, that we are a part of being in relationship with them, that we have been faithful to be involved, to love, to care for, to give, to go, to pray. Lord, would you continue to enable us to say yes to our part in their yeses, Thank you for a local church infused with DNA that says we will say yes to your mission, God. Remind us of these beautiful faces. Remind us of these names. Lord, continue to give us opportunity to be in constant relationship with those who are giving their all for your cause. We love you. We thank you for this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Before you are dismissed, I'm going to let these four head out to the lobby so that you can hug some necks. Go, go, go. Thank you, church. May God bless each of you as you continue to say yes to his call and remain faithful to what he's invited you to be a part of in your life. Be on mission. Kringles, go too. Go, go, go. God bless you, church. You're dismissed.